Hello, welcome to the Sunday Meditations at the Light Institute of Galisteo and the Sanctuary of Light. Today is a wonderful day for the meditation of our lives because it's Mother's Day. And mothers are the ones who we have that karmic contract with, one way or another, to be the vehicles, uh, the receptors uh, that bring us from the unmanifest into manifestation and out into this world with all of those conversations that we've had again and again with those that we call mothers, our soul family. And so in the third part of this meditation today, we'll send light uh, and gratitude to our mothers. It matters not if your mother's still in body and also activate that mothering energy in us that we can extend to the world. As usual, we begin by dividing the meditation into three parts. The first part is asking our divine higher self, the intuitive essence of the soul, to take a form, to touch our body, and then we sit in meditation. Now, because this is virtual, uh, I will say OM and you can push the button so that you can go on meditating and then I'll go into the second part and the third part and then on to the knowings that we have every Sunday. And so let's begin to meditate together. Imagine all of us meditating right now. It creates a ripple into this world and allows us to truly fulfill our destiny. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath into your body. Breathe out slowly. Ask your higher self, the intuitive essence of your soul, your own inner voice, to take a form for you, any form, a light, a being, a tree, an equation, an animal, what form comes? Ask your higher self to touch the place in your body where you hold your divine essence at this moment and breathe into that touch. Just imagine it. And now draw your higher self into your body and sit in meditation. Breathe deeply into your body and draw white light from the cosmos, down from the cosmos to the top of your head, down into your stomach, your solar plexus, and from there, laser it out from you, expanding your auric field, expanding your presence and your purpose, and allow that light to continue to flow down through you and out from you and back into the cosmos. And just continue that flow it gives you presence, it gives you strength, and it allows you to quicken your frequency. Oh. Breathe deeply into your body and bring your mother into your mind's eye. It might be your mother, your stepmother, your anyone who has played that role for you. My father played that role for me many times. But bring your mother who gave birth to you first into your mind's eye. And allow all these others to gather around the sides if, if they wish. And ask your mother what frequency of light she needs from you to experience your gratitude on that highest spiritual level and that acceptance that she birthed you. Again, with the gratefulness of the life that she gave you. Whatever color comes to you, you draw that color from the cosmos down to the top of your head and laser it out to your mother. And allow her to take that frequency of light. It's the cosmic language of communication 
You send that to her with that sense of gratitude that you are present on this planet at this time. And just allow her to fill with that light and then allow her to be free to disappear. And now reach into your beingness, males and females hold mothering frequencies within them. For you it might be tenderness or protection or caring or teaching, loving, inclusion. Whatever qualities of mothering you have experienced, either receiving it or giving it in this lifetime. Allow yourself to be aware of those energies of mothering. Whatever they are. Brick open the encapsulation of that mothering quality, those qualities within you, and feel them flow through your body so that your body can really amplify them now. The world needs your mothering energy and then radiate them out from your body through your auric field and feel yourself extending them out into the world, embracing all of humanity and just continue to allow that flow of your mothering qualities. And as they flow out into the world, imagine that each of the more than seven billion humans begin to discover their own mothering qualities. These are the energies that can bring us into a new octave of humanity. Do it now and allow it to flow. Home. Take a deep breath into your body. And open your eyes. And thank you. Being the mother of six myself, being a great grandmother, how I love the Day of Mothers and how I see that in everyone around me. Now we'll begin our knowing session. We have four questions, again, from around the world today. Uh, so let's hear what you have asked to discuss. Allison will read the questions. Chris, the first question comes from Germany. Dear Chris, I just found this quote and I would very much like to hear your comments about it. Thank you. And the quote is, you may be the last generation which has the possibility to rebel. And if you don't rebel, there may be no more chance. Humanity can be reduced to a robotic-like existence. So rebel while there is still time. Hmm. That's a very powerful statement. And we could see how that could become true in this, in this time of robotic um, behavior, actually, following the lead of whomever. Uh, but it will not happen, because you and I are here, and we have incarnated many, many times. What I'm seeing is that there's a new kind of rebellion. The rebellion can be, no, we will not live this way. This is not uh, who we are. We're seeing the exposure of corruption and the imbalancing of power and the imbalancing of caring for humanity. All these things are coming up and inviting us to, quote, rebel. But we can rebel in a new ways, not against something, but we can gather our voices and gather our energies to collectively Again, make a stance and, and move to the next octave. The problem with rebellions in the past has been that we could fight against something, but we didn't know how to create what we thought should be there. And so it's very important to use this recognition that we've come to the end of life cycles living the way we have with the hurt to other humans with all of these negative energies to ourselves, to each other, and to the planet. And that this time, we must include in that rebellion 
the answers that bring us into a higher octave that says, not this, but that. And, and harvest from each other all the possibilities so that we become the leaders. Because very often with rebellion, we say, no, we won't allow you. And then a new leader comes, and that leader doesn't know how to lead. Because this is not the time of the leaders. This is the time of the collective consciousness. And each of us have a, have a voice, and each of us have something to play, uh, a part to play. And so it is a call for awakening, to watch if we are becoming sheep, if we are losing our rights. But be, a bit, be conscious of how we can go from, you can't take this away from me, to here's a different way to do it. And that's why we're here. We know the answers because we have been through these times. Even in this, in this lifetime, we have been through these kinds of times and we will come through it. So that prediction came a while ago and it came with a warning to awaken. And I find that around the world, we are awakening. So do not be afraid, but step forward and rebel from that higher place of knowing. Great love to you. Allison? The next question comes from Santa Fe, New Mexico. Chris, since New Mexico implemented stay at home, I've had to do several jobs that I normally pay others to do, and I'm developing an enhanced sense of appreciation for these jobs and the people who do them, creating a profound depth of connection within me. My question to you is, do you think humanity as a whole has lost this valuable sense of others and that this might be at least part of the reason for our planetary problems? <laughs> planetary problems, emotional, individual problems always have purpose. And one of the gifts, because at the Light Institute we always say, what is the gift? So one of the gifts of suddenly having to do things for yourself is that awakening of appreciation for others. And as you step into those roles of doing things that you used to be able to pay somebody else to do, uh, you want to really uh, not just think, wow, I wish I had that person back, but to actually send light to that person, as we've talked about in many of our uh, uh, conversations together, asking them what color they need, on a psychic level, drawing it from the cosmos and radiating to, the hand, to them so that you can feel that you are extending now the gratitude that someone could relieve you of doing that. But the other side of that is to realize that what we do, it's not what we do. It doesn't matter whether you're cleaning toilets <laughs> or you're the great CEO. At the moment of your death, it will make no difference. And at these moments, it makes no difference. What matters is that whatever it is that you do, you feel how wonderful, how powerful it is to be the one doing it. And you put all of your consciousness into it to make beauty, to clean up, uh, to care for another. As we begin to <clears throat> feel these energies in ourselves, gratitude for others comes right behind it. And we need to communicate that, not just think to ourselves, wow, I wish that person would come back and I could pay them. But rather, I see how beautiful it is that someone took care of me in that way, whatever way that was. And perhaps in recognizing that, you can find how you could take care not only, <clears throat> not only of yourself, but of others as well in the same way. It is not what we do. It is the grace with which we do it. Allison. The next question is from England. Dear Chris, I currently live in London and I'm in lockdown. I'm interested in your soul lessons through the body incarnational sessions, mm -hmm. but cannot travel to have these. I am not ill, but I do find it challenging at times to understand my body's needs and to communicate with her. Mm. I would really like to improve our relationship and trust it. Can you help? 
I certainly can. I think most of my work is about that conversation, about learning that. And do you know what? In fact, in fact, it's very, very simple. There are many techniques of consciousness that, that we could speak about at some time, but there's a simple one. If you ask your body what it likes, what it doesn't like, what it wants to eat, it will answer you. So begin by practicing. And it's wonderful to practice with food. Do you want this body? And then just kind of feel inside. Yes or no? Now in our last little short video, we learned a kinesiology technique for feeling uh, the body's answer through your nervous system. But you can simply in your consciousness say, do you want this body? Do you want it now? And ask as many questions as possible. The trick to that is, if, you, if, you're, if you're asking, should I go for a walk or should I do some exercise body, but you're feeling tired and your body says, yes, you get that, yes, but then you go, but I don't really want to. You must. You must. And that's how you build that trust. You honor. Body, do you want these vitamins? Do you want this? And if you just keep doing this, you'll begin to feel that relationship that you have. And, and without any doubts, you will sense that energy. You are intuitive. Your body is your closest closest friend. It's the one who can answer you the clearest, the body never lies, of anyone around you. Anyone. And so begin by practicing. Would you like this body? I, I'll ask my body, shall I wear this? Shall I call somebody right now? Shall I go at this moment? The more that you ask these questions and then you just instantaneously you have a sense, yes or no. Uh, you will begin to trust your body. The more that you trust your body, the more you'll find that your body seems to be getting, as you said, you are not ill, but more in, uh, enlightened, and more conscious, uh, more happy, more responsive, uh, because your body is uh, one of the deepest and most wonderful aspects. It is how your soul grows. And so just try that. Just begin to ask and do it all day long, every day. And the doubt will dissolve away. And pretty soon, if your body says, I don't want that, don't do it or don't take it. But if it says yes, what? just do it. And you're going to feel how your body responds because you listen to your body. You open that communication. There's no blockage to communicating with our physical vehicles. Remember that your physical vehicle is not just bones and blood and flesh. It is the vehicle of your soul. It has a connection to your psychic, emotional body, your spiritual body, your mind body. It's easy. Do it now. Yes, Allison. The last question comes from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Hi, Chris. Do you know a mudra for anxiety? <laughs> well, I don't know if you saw those videos that we did about the lungs, but do you know that when we talk about the fact that each part of our body represents a kind of energy, and our lungs represent anxiety. And so one of the things, the first mudra that I would re-show re you, is this one that has to do with the thumbs. Because the thumbs um, it reflect the bronchial area, which is where we want to be able to uh, breathe and then breathe down deeply. So I love this one. This is what babies do when they're first born. Grab your thumbs like this and hold them down uh, in your lap. I, I, one of the reasons I love this is that when we're anxious, we feel vulnerable. And somehow holding your thumbs, holding your lungs, holding your bronchial is a way of protecting them. So it gives you a kind of sense of strength, and I am here. So I think this is a great mudra to begin to uh, speak to your whole body. The second one that, that you have seen many, many times is this beautiful mudra that is shown with the, with the, um, the, in the Buddhic uh, traditions and in the Eastern traditions, this open-handed taking your forefinger and your thumbs and linking them together and spreading out your fingers and turning them up. Now what I like about this is that 
These four fingers represent your lungs in terms of acupuncture. It's the lung meridian. And the thumb really represents the cosmos of the higher frequencies. So when you put them together, it creates this a circling of your energy so the energy is not lost. And you open your hands. And what's important about this is, again, it's a kind of linking up with the cosmos, feeding your physicality, but it also uh, allows you to feel that you're safe being open. You know, our breathing. Uh, what's happening with anxiety today is that our, um, our blood uh, oxygen levels are lower because of the toxins in the air, because we live in cities, etc. And what we've found is that depression, very often, kinds, many kinds of depression are nothing more than the loss of oxygen. It's an anxiety energy in which we don't really, we can't really say it's because, because, because of this. But it's still a sense of anxiety. And that's your cells talking because the cells are not getting the oxygen they need uh, from the blood. It's just not getting onto the cellular level. So when we do this, and again, if you're just sitting, uh, even if you were eating and you're eating with one hand and you're using this other hand that way, it's a way of communicating. Uh, and of course, it's fantastic for your meditations that say, uh, I am open because I'm safe. So I'm not vulnerable. And as I open like this and I link up energetically uh, these, these connections between my lungs and my cosmic uh, source that I truly am safe. And so just try that. And sit in meditation a little bit. And you know, even when you lie down at night um, or when you wake up in the morning, if you're lying on your back, you can do this mudra, not just when you're sitting in meditation. And, and it's really... It brings a sense of peace and it brings us back into balance. So that's why it was given. And we can use this now. I love this. Try it. Great love to you and to each and all of you.